high noon. I thank you everyone for attending. We've got a few board members uh, coming in remotely. The rest are here at uh, 110 Waterloo Avenue. Welcome everybody. Um, so we'll start with the um, minutes of the last meeting on December 21st. I hope you've had a chance to review them. Um, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Jackie. Second. Second. Joe? Any comments, changes, edits? Looks good to me. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Approved. And today, uh, no recognitions card, so I guess we're moving right into committee reports. Yeah, it's disappointing, but these things ebb and flow. I'm a perfect world. Every one of these meetings we have to do. Could make up a recognition. <laughs> we can recognize someone right now if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody recognize. No, there, there you go. That's yeah, they would find that interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, then we'll move on to the committee reports. I'll kick it off with the um, uh, Foreign Operations Committee that met on <coughs> January 11th. Uh, we reviewed the agendas and activities for all the committee and board meetings for the month of January. Uh, Lisa Morello joined us uh, with an update on advocacy. She summarized the governor's state of the state address and mentions of funding for public transit systems around the state. Uh, and this is a uh, precursor to the executive budget issuance, which is supposed to come out in February. Uh, Carmen and Lisa will be meeting with state legislators, their staff, uh, appropriate agency staff in the coming weeks, and we'll keep the committee apprised of, of their updates. Uh, we also talked about parking rates at the Rensselaer uh, Rail Station that were last increased in April of 2013. Uh, the rates are reviewed for adjustment every few years as a good business practice. And in late 2019, uh, staff reviewed the rate structure, found the rates uh, were in line to be adjusted. The board authorized new rates, which were set to begin in April 2020. Uh, the pandemic put that on hold. Um, so now uh, with uh, travel by train increasing significantly and our rates for parking falling further behind, uh, comparable facilities, the time is right to increase, uh, to make the increase, which are modest. Uh, the new rate structure will be effective Monday, April 3rd, 2023, and CDTA will launch an outreach and promotional campaign to assure customers are aware of the rate change. Revenues uh, for parking funds uh, uh, are used for the upkeep of the rail station and its associated facilities. The uh, committee also received a report on the collective bargaining agreement process for negotiation. The agreement with the amalgamated uh, transit union expires in June of this year. Our next meeting is scheduled for uh, Wednesday, February 8th at 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterville Avenue. If you have any questions, I can answer them. Testimony from the, the parking lot. Is that going to operating? Operating and... Uh, a capital reserve fund that funds maintenance oh, okay. items at the rail station. And, and what is the lift that is expected from that, the revenue bill? About a half a million dollars. Annually. Annually. Give or take. Right. That's it. Right. And if you say, 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 you know, have another backward step here. So the maintenance is paid for out of its own revenue? Like when we did the deck and all that. Yeah, it was capital accounts. Okay. Fund. And we generate more than just parking revenue. We generate revenue from the station itself, you know, the leases and things of that nature. Uh, as you know, the newsstand, there's a coffee shop, sandwiches, there's post office, Amtrak itself, uh, in phase 10. But all these things work in conjunction. The parking is, is the one that we control the most, obviously. And, and there's demand. And we, we've fallen behind. This will put us, I checked last night just to, to, to see how close we would be. The airport's $14. Our, our garage rate would go to $14. A daily. Thank you. Or Carmen can answer any questions if you have left. The shell answer man, uh, I can't guarantee they're right, but I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Or listen, we've got, yeah, we've got people who can answer that question, either here or after the meeting. 
Uh, we'll move on to the next committee report from uh, Denise Figueroa from the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a lot shorter than last uh, time. So uh, the committee met on January 18th uh, here at 110 Water Elite and on uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have two consent agenda items uh, for today. And uh, the first is approval of the contract for engine oil purchase. Our contract for engine oil is about to expire. And we issued an invitation for bids. Uh, two bids were received and staff recommended contract to the low bidder, Brentag Lubricants Northeast. Uh, they are the incumbent and we are satisfied with their products and services. Um, so at this point, we need a motion to award a one year contract with one uh, one year, uh, I'm sorry, one optional renewal year to Brentag Lubricants Northeast New Hampshire for an amount not to exceed <coughs> $453,120. Can I get a motion on the first resolution of the year? Dave, thank you. Joe, second? Second. Uh, any comments, questions about engine oil? <laughs> no one. <laughs> we need it. Yeah. All right. Uh, then um, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, it's approved. Okay, our next item is the 2022 surplus sales. Each year we dispose of equipment, vehicles, and parts that are beyond their useful life. Items are auctioned on eBay, sold for scrap metal, or recycled. Um, through these sales, $37,301 was returned to the operating budget. So we need a motion to approve the report on disposition of surplus items. Thank you. Second? Thank you. Again, any, any questions, comments about this? Sort of standard thing we do every year. As Stacy said in her report, a little bit of a slow year. Uh, revenue was, she didn't have as much stuff to sell. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Exit flows. Okay, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Thank you. Okay, next we uh, received a report from Sarah Matrose uh, on the uh, for, for quarterly report for um, the audit committee. Um, it's in your packets. Um, the annual independence and objectivity statement and the internal audit charter were reviewed, and a written summary was provided. Hopefully everyone had a chance to review that. Uh, next were administrative discussion items, the first being the annual procurement report. Stacey Fansky provided the annual review of the procurement report. Uh, the report reviews the procurement process for change orders, sole source contracts, and our minority women business enterprise program. Uh, the complete report is included in your packets, and any questions on that can go to Anybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally, it'd go to Stacy, but Jamie yeah. needs to back up the Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, right. You know the next to Stacy. You know the policy. <laughs> okay. Um, so, next we have the risk management and workers' compensation quarterly report. Amanda Avery provided uh, the quarterly review on the risk management. Um, and workers' compensation self-insurance accounts. Um, the committee determined that both of those accounts are adequate at this time. Uh, the monthly management report was provided by Mike Collins. Uh, the MRT continues to outperform budget projections. Customer fair revenue is 24% over budget, and we received a $150,000 check for exceeding our advertising goals. Um, Wages were over budget this month, but the year wages remain almost 4% under budget. And we're in a very good financial position at this point. Any questions on that for Mike? <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, Chris Desney provided the non-financial report. Uh, fixed route ridership continues to grow, and it's up 14% for the month and 18% for the year. Star ridership is up 7% for the month and 13% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was up, um, was at 73% and star on-time performance was at 77%. Uh, 
the missed trips have trended down the past few months, but continue to be high due to headcount issues. There were 24 preventable accidents and 14 non-preventable accidents. And the absenteeism report shows that 11% of work days are not worked. Any questions on that report? Okay, so the next uh, meeting of the committee is on February 15th here at 110 Water Police. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. We'll move on to the uh, Community Stakeholder Relations Committee, Becky Baltico. Thank you. Uh, the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on January 19th in person and uh, also via Microsoft Teams. We had um, two uh, things on the agenda. Staff provided updates on advocacy in the community kitchen and community engagement efforts throughout the uh, entire year of 2022. The first item, uh, CARM provided a summary of advocacy efforts for the 2023 legislative season. Meetings with legislators at both the local and the state level have begun. Our message of more money means more mobility is the central theme of those conversations. Uh, the second um, was the uh, 2022 year in review report on communications outreach, media relations, and community engagement uh, provided by Jamie Caswell. Throughout the year, CBTA earned 177 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio. The top earning months were May, August, and December with combined 75 stories earned. The stories focused on new products and services and community partnerships. Some of the bigger initiatives contributing to the media placements were the start of service in Montgomery County, new universal access partnerships, and federal investments received as part of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. CDTA supported more than 100 organizations and businesses throughout the year with meaningful engagement opportunities that allowed CDTA to showcase its brand and reach into the communities that it serves. Jeannie outlined goals and initiatives for the 2023 Communication and Community Engagement Program um, for this upcoming year. The plan will focus on highlighting new mobility options, community partnerships, and new and creative ways to tell the CDTA story. If, uh, no one has any questions. Um, the next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, February 16th, uh, here at 110 Water Fleet Ave, and also by Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Jackie. Any questions for our the committee? All right, then we'll move on to the next committee report, Strategic and Operational Planning, Mike Rochelle. Thanks, Jamie. Um, the committee met on January 19th here at 110 Water Fleet Ave and via Microsoft Teams. We had no consent agenda items and one administrative discussion item, which was the facility condition analysis report. Jerry, Jeremy Smith gave an update on the facility condition analysis report. We conduct this uh, assessment on our fixed building assets to inform the capital planning priorities over the next decade or so. We retain WSP USA Inc. to perform in-depth visual condition assessment of our three operating divisions, both rail stations, 85 water balloon, and a sample of bus stops and shelters. We have, in, we have been engaged in this work over the last several months. The evaluation team consisted of facility staff, architects, engineers, bus fleet experts, and cost estimators. It performed site inspections using industry standard rating scales and procedures as recommended by the FDA. Of the findings found, the facilities rank between 2.7 and 3.7 on a scale of 1 to 5 uh, across all categories, substructure, shell, interiors, conveyance, plumbing, HVAC, fire protection, electrical equipment, and site assessment. Some of these findings were considered high urgency, half of which have been resolved or are already in progress. Recommended budgets for repairs and replacements were provided in an amount of approximately $16 million. As expected, the Schenectady garage rated the lowest of all facilities as uh, marginal. The committee discussed addressing ADA issues and how overall near-term investment should be considered carefully because at the same time we are planning for a replacement facility. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be on February 16th here at 110 Water Believe Ave and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report unless there's any other comments or questions. Great, thank you, Mike. Yep. 
Uh, that uh, reform is very interesting. It's also um, comes across as extremely complicated. There's really a, a lot of detail to it. And um, uh, Carmen and I have talked about this, and, and we really think that we need a subset of the board to get a sort of a broader uh, view, kind of that 30,000 foot level about where we're going to go with this reform. We don't need uh, all, the, all the details. What we need is some real strategic direction. And so uh, with that, uh, I am appointing a uh, ad hoc committee of the board uh, to be uh, called the West Facility Committee, chaired by uh, Mike Crishone, uh, but also on the committee will be uh, Georgie Nugent, uh, Joe Sperana, uh, Pat Lance, and Dan Lynch, and I appreciate all of you getting involved with that. I think it's a real big task ahead of us. I think once the staff gets a little better organized on this, uh, the committee will start meeting and talking about what the next steps are so we can figure out sort of a much better solution to the myriad problems that were identified uh, in, in, in the report. How did you refer to uh, the version of the Schenectady facility? Marginal. Mar 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 yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to work on that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't get overly concerned with marginal, um, and, and honestly, it's staff's job to go through that report and you know develop a game plan. And most of that is in development. Not much that was in there was surprising. Um, I think we've talked many, many times over the last couple of years that it's a fact all of our buildings are at least 50 years old, and at some point you have to start talking. Well, save the two rail stations. Uh, at some point, you have to start talking about um, replacing them or one of them. And you know, for a time, we thought about a centralized facility, but we had several consultants look at that. The footprint required, the cost required, and what we thought we would save and you know, eliminate redundancies of doing the same thing in three places really doesn't really bear itself out. So uh, we think the, the West facility and you know, we might find that that may not end up being where it is, but every all signs point to West facility, especially with Montgomery County coming online and, and anticipated growth, whether it's by CDTA or the new CDTA with merger with uh, Warren, Warren County, Glens Falls. That is probably the direction for West. And by West, I go that way rather than just that way. So for me, the ad hoc committee really is a spark. Board committee is created, you know, you had a little spark on flame. And I think it'd be a big help to staff. Also, there's a real need to kind of get going. So yeah. I mean, you can just sort of drift on these kinds of issues. It can take a while. Funding alone certainly is a multi year uh, process, but I think the sooner we can get our act together and kind of figure out what really needs to be done, the size of this facility, where it might go, the better off we're going to yep. be. Ultimately, you want site selection. So once there's site selection, you know, you kind of boxed it in, and then there's a project, then, you know, the FTA is much more willing to listen to you and talk to you about you know, creative ways to fund it. You know, the state uh, then gets put on notice. Uh, it's a logical progression. Well, I think all the committee reports are pointing to how well we're doing in recovering from the COVID. Um, we're performing much better than a lot of other properties. Um, Jamie or, or Carm can address that, but uh, we're in pretty good shape, I think. Yeah, and, and frankly, my CEO report just sort of every month echoes that and echoes the work that's done by the people around the table, the people who don't come to these meetings, you know, who, who are doing this day in and day out. But by any measurement, uh, we're, our recovery bus only system. Our recovery is is is, is <laughs> I'm trying to find the word without overstating it. I want to say extraordinary, but maybe one level below extraordinary. I mean, our ridership through through December was 10, a little over 10 million. Uh, we'll be well over 11 million when, when January closes. We're getting back to numbers that you know are really almost 2018 numbers, you know, 2017 numbers. Customer revenue, too, is really the one that's most notable. It's recovering faster than any of our revenue lines. And, and, and we're on pace. That's all universal access driven. We're on pace to really sort of knock it out of the park there. We're lucky. Um, Jackie and I were talking about mortgage tax because I'm on the lookout 
you know, the only thing that the Warren County Board of Supervisors want to know is, well, gee, how much mortgage tax do we have to pay? Uh, and that's really the, the, the shining light. You know, we're, we're, we're not going to, all right, that will slow. You know, Mike Collins is right. It will, it will slow, but it won't come down to levels that are um, worrisome. So you're right, Joe. It's, it's really the people around the table and around the room and not here who are really doing a wonderful job. As I tell people, if we had, if everybody came to work every day, um, we really wouldn't have a problem. Um, that's the retention issue. We're going we're gonna to figure that one out, too. I'm way out on the limb there. But we're going to figure it out. Jack's that's a, smiling, so it's all right. That's a societal issue. It's not, it's not just you. Know, you've heard from other board members who bring their own experiences to the table. I mean, you know, when you have, to me, the, the, the issue, when you have accountants who don't really want to work during tax season, you know, don't want to work on Saturday, I mean, it used to be a given, right? You come out of Santa College and you get your first job, you know three months out of the year you're working seven days a week. Now they say, I'm not going to do it. It's, it. it's beyond befuddling. How that one for two people beyond befuddling? <laughs> Okay, um, why don't we just move into the CEO report then? Great, I already gave it. Uh, <laughs> uh, in, in your report though is, uh, we do this every year, but uh, <coughs> Jamie shop actually Vanessa uh, did a lot of the work on this. Uh, we took the year of review and made it a little more colorful, but it highlights, and we intentionally don't just get into the hardcore operating uh, accomplishments, there's some operating accomplishments, there's some some bikes and cars and new things that we do. The, you know, we highlight the open, the, the, the addition out back and all the other associated things. But it, it really was a, good, a really good year. Um, and I was thinking, you know, 20 years ago, the tag of mobility manager, I, I, I just don't think would have been believable. I think we would have been laughed out of the room. Um, but people have embraced it now, and it's believable. And I think it's really because of what we've built here. People really, really believe that we're capable of more than what we do, um, if, you, if you can believe that. Uh, so that really is Lisa Morello's message, uh, my message when we meet now with elected officials. We don't lead with we need more money. We lead now with the community wants more. And we're, shown, we're showing them a list of places where we have service requests. You know, put back service, add more service, create new service. And we're saying we want to, in a perfect world, we want to say yes to all of these, but we don't have enough resources. Now, we don't define what resources are. We all know that even money may not be able to solve that problem. But people want more. They want more bikes. They want more. Already, we're being asked for more cars. We haven't even really gotten out of the, we've unveiled it, but we're really not even at the pilot stage if people want more cars. Our corporate partners want their own cars. So I'm going to let Scherzer try to figure that one out. And he will, but but you know, like Albany Met, why can't we have our own car in a garage? Our employees use their ID card. You know, just just an example. So we introduce something and people grab onto it, uh, and they want they want more of it. Um, budget season uh, is kicked off. It's in, it's a different feel around the company when you're in budget season. And those of you that do budgets know that. So for the next couple of months, you'll hear a lot about that, a lot of touch points. You will wait and see what the governor has uh, uh, in her uh, budget that, that will come out February 1. She's made that announcement. I, we don't anticipate any bump up in Stella. Uh, there might be some, some capital programs that she'll want to highlight, maybe make some money available. But you know, we got a big bump last year in Stella. I, I don't anticipate a big one, but we'll, we'll be fighting for it, both our association and and us individually, but on the internal budget, the way we do it is we sort of build it from the bottom up. Everybody gets a shot, we talk about what they need, what they want, and you know, this is really people. Uh, the budget is really driven by people, so if you ask for more people, we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask, well, why do you want more people? What are you gonna do with more people? You know, the fact that you want more people to manage what we're doing today doesn't usually cut it. You know, what, uh, I need more people to manage what we want to do tomorrow, then it's a different story. So, um, just 
Trish, not, Trish, Trish's first uh, budget season alone, so uh, she's the new kid on the block. I'm sure she'll get tested. Yeah. And I need more people to do this. But she's pretty capable. I think it's going to be hard to fly that one by her, but uh, uh, it's all good. Uh, facility stuff, as I said, uh, not really a surprise. <coughs> Lots of detail, but we need that. It sets us up really, we're a little behind, usually every five years by seven. It sets us up, gives us a playbook and a game plan. Let's Falls, uh, a lot of work last month. Uh, we met with all of their employees in small groups, about two dozen, really to sort of uh, calm them down. You know, what does this mean for me? How do I fit in? Are you going to change everything? Those are the kind of questions we're getting. You know, are you going to paint the buses blue? You know, we haven't even gotten to that point yet. Um, you know, you got to change the routes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we, I think we have everybody on board. That I think is put to bed. Great cooperation with the City of Lutz Falls. Remember, those are city employees, so they're CSEA employees. So there's there's some clumsiness there in how we'll, we'll, we'll transition. But the city's been very cooperative. And I think we have a we have a, a roadmap actually for each employee. Uh, so so they'll, they'll they'll all I think end up I think they'll end up better off. Than uh, the mayor, uh, uh, Bill Collins, uh, had the merger as a feature part of his speech, his State of the City speech, uh, very much uh, a supporter. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a municipal, it's a department of the city of Glens Falls, so uh, having his support is, is critical. It doesn't fly without the support. Now, the next level is the Warren County Board of Supervisors, and we don't see any real resistance or opposition there. Got to fine tune that mortgage tax number. That's uh, obviously what they're going to want to know. Uh, there's some pockets of, you know, well, what does this mean for us? And this, of course, it means you know, you're going to have a bus route to Bold Landing. Uh, well, no, it doesn't. Uh, and, and those are the hard, those are the hardest questions. And, and we're not going to go to Gore. Uh, and, and that's, you know, the things that I think they they've been asking the small system runs falls to do. And the answer probably won't be a whole lot different from us. I mean, way out of market. That's going well, and if I were to predict, sometime in 2023, we'll have a six-county uh, joint authority. Could hit a could hit a road, could hit a bump in the road, but right now I don't, I don't see a bump in the road. Um, HR stuff, non-stop recruitment. Uh, a class of 12 was in this room uh, about a week and a half ago, and they're well underway in training. Um, I don't want to jinx anything, but retention looks a little bit better lately. Mainly what we're doing uh, there is we've got everybody who's supposed to be working, working. Uh, so the retention thing settles down a bit when everybody is working because then the load in operations is reduced. You know, right now, if everybody came to work every day, we know our attendance rate is not what we want it. And people who were on all those lists of disability, workers' comp, all those kinds of things, if half of them uh, were not on that list, we really don't have a problem. Uh, we would not be doing the juggling that we're doing. But those issues are what they are. And you're always going to have people on those lists. What we're trying to do is minimize that. It takes a lot of management, though. A lot of management. There's a ton of staff time in making sure that the FMLA door only opens to people who truly need it. Once you're in the program and you're maybe 75% in need, you have it and it's, it's, it's impossible to get someone off of that program. FMLA is a tremendous benefit and much needed, but in a, system, in a business like ours, it, it, it causes, it can cause bedlam because if someone calls, we were having this discussion this morning, if someone calls in at 515 because they, uh, have FMLA because they're caring for a, 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 a family member who uh, has you know, whatever the illness might be. They call at 515. We can't replace that person at 515 in the morning. Uh, so what we do is we, and Chris has been uh, watching this, you know, to understand maybe come up with some solutions, is our dispatcher do iterations that I, I can't even begin to tell you what they do the pieces for. If they're heroes, those are the ones that are the heroes. 
couple have egos too, and they're like, oh, it's all their hero. You know, yeah. Where's the money? But, but that's what happens to us. That's what happens to us every day. We've talked about our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Uh, it's kind of behind the scenes, and you haven't seen a lot. We'll, we'll get a report uh, for you on that. But we're working with Tangible Development, a consultant group. Uh, we're also uh, a signator on the uh, APTA effort. So we're working at this from a couple of, of, of fronts. Our staff leadership team has gone through a pretty extensive, um, I'm not sure I would call it education, but I'd call it an awareness program. Uh, it certainly raises the level of awareness to some of these issues that maybe you didn't think about or didn't pay attention to. So that's the first step that we're finding from the APTA, APTA work, that that's either the first or second step. And then just today, actually, because uh, I completed the survey, we're engaging uh, all of our employees in um, uh, an effort that sort of will set the bar. Where are we? What do people here think of our efforts um, at, at diversity, equity, and inclusion? It's about a 15-minute survey. Uh, totally anonymous, administered uh, for tangible by the Siena Research Institute, which, as you know, is a, a leader in this work. Um, I don't know. If I had a guess, given my years here, it, the, the return won't be in the 70% range. Uh, it'll, it'll likely be 20, 30, 40%, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. It's a first step. It's really from your perspective, where you sit as an employee, what do you think? Based on who you are, uh, how you identify, what do you, how are we doing? And from there, we'll be able to then get into you know, what should we do. We can't, we can't talk about what should we do until we know how are we doing. Uh, so it should be interesting. It's very, very interesting stuff. And we're, we're, we'll continue to work with the active group to make sure that you know we're staying in tune with what our issue is. So, so a lot of work on that. Uh, you know, a lot more to come. Uh, January is where we set the tone, though, for the year. Um, I think, as usual, at least where I sit, the tone is let's do more, uh, let's be better, let's be bigger, let's be creative. Um, and I know sometimes that pushes people, um, but I don't think we're asking too much yet. Yeah. Uh, we want to do more, we want to be better. Uh, we're growing. And we're able, I think, because of that, to continue to have the seat at that table that we talked about, you know, locally. Uh, we're we're involved in just about everything right now. All good. Concludes my report. Thank you, Carr. Anybody have any questions for Carr at this point on his report? Any uh, general board member mm -hmm. comments? Is, is that eleven percent? That was quoted before the absence period. Is that from an industry standard uh, industry? Is that, it sounds like it's high historically for this institution. Uh, it's a little high for us, but um, compared to the industry, that's actually a little low. It's more like 14 or 15 percent. I take that with a grain of salt. Uh, that's comparing ourselves to not us. You know, and, and take the major systems out. You know, yeah, we can be better. We can be better. Uh, and frankly, if you could get 11 percent down to 9 percent, again, problem solved. Um, our budget and headcount number is perfect. It's the fact that <laughs> not all those people are engaged, working, fixing. Analyzing, that's, that's the issue. There are plenty of people to get them all cut to work. And I know that sounds harsh, um, but I, I don't have a better way of describing it. But that's like an orchestra, right? You've got to get all the instruments playing. And guaranteed, if we get them all come back to work, we'd have some sort of retention thing. I was talking to an HR consultant today, and Jackie and I were talking to him. Um, it's everywhere. It's, it's every place. You know, look at nurses. You know, look at the wait time and all their bed. You know, I mean, it's, it's manpower. It's people power. Well, there's 
no alternative but keep at it. So. Yeah. Absolutely. What's the alternative, right? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Hannaford Supermarket, a kid come in, not a kid, he was 20 years old, come in and worked for two or three hours in the bakery and said, I don't like this, and he left. I mean, Give it a shot. Yeah. So my counter story to that, as this was told to me by uh, people at Star, uh, well, actually, Jack Grogan knows this, uh, go through training, right, six weeks of training, and you know, talk about you know, the hours of operation. Now, Star's hours of operation are a little less intensive than, than the fiction side, but the person uh, is assigned to Star. Uh, I think it was the first day on the job. I had a shift that worked until like 4 o'clock, I think it was 4 o'clock or so. Told the dispatcher, hey, uh, dispatcher, how'd it go? Uh, not bad, but uh, remember, I don't like to work nights. Well, you're not working nights, it's 4 o'clock, it's late afternoon. Uh, second day, I think it was a little later, worked until uh, 6 or 6.30 and said uh, to the dispatcher, how'd it go? I, I, I don't work nights, I told you that, I don't work nights. Well, 6.30 is not really, not, in our world, that's not really even nights. On uh, the third day, person was nowhere to be found. You know. I don't work nights. I don't work late afternoons. But the training, right? they get it. They get six weeks of this. This is the hour. This is expected. We, so we essentially wasted our six whole training, training program, program. Yeah. on this individual. Several thousand dollars invested. I don't work nights. In our world, the first two days, they need to work nights. Like we get it. I like the bakery book. <laughs> <laughs> the mistakes are easy to take care of. Any other board member comments? Floor is open. Uh, if not, then our next meeting, next board meeting, will be on Wednesday, February 22nd at noon here at uh, 110 Water, Water Bleed Avenue. Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Peter. Second, Second, Jackie. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.